Hello friends, Techman Pat here. Today we're doing a tutorial video on how to replace this, a DMD chip on a Hisense 4K laser projector. Now this tutorial can be used for other similar DMD-like chip projectors. And of course, I will put the model and model number of this chip inside the description below for you to find. The reason for this replacement is that DMD chips tend to fail and cause dead pixels. Those dead pixels look like white little squares across your projection. And it's because they have thousands of little mirrors, tiny microscopic mirrors that push light through and back out to the lens that projects onto your wall or your projector screen. And hence, these things break. They are hard to get to inside a device, but I hope this tutorial shows you the general location that most projectors will have this chip in and how to replace it. So if this helped you, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to support us. Let's get started. Let's start with the back of the device. We will unscrew nine screws with a Phillips head screwdriver. A large one would be preferable as the screws are pretty big. We can then take off the cover and put it to the side where we'll see a nice view of the main motherboard. There are two more screws that are holding the top cover into the motherboard. We can then turn the device upside down and remove further screws on the bottom. The little black arrows will show you which screws to remove. For demonstrative purposes, I have left the device vertically, but it's best to put it on its back. We can then return to the motherboard and gently unclip all the plugs. They're all different sizes, so it'll be quite easy to put them back into place. You may need to use something to grab the little ones with enough force to pull them without pulling on the actual cables. Make sure to unwind them from the hook that's located to the left there. This will allow us to remove the top cover and get to all the components. Both sides have plastic clips that you'll need to pull up on. Do it gently to not break anything. Before we continue, we need to disconnect the power even though the device is off, the capacitors could still be holding charge. Because we're touching the motherboard, it's best to remove this. It is a four colored pin right at the top of the device. It is very easily accessible and very thick cabled. Looking at the top of the device, you'll see a metal plate. We'll need to remove some sticky tape that's holding down a ribbon cable. And of course, we will also remove the ribbon cable. There are three screws on the metal plate, two at the top and one on this vertical side. We will now remove the ribbon cable that's connected to the red motherboard and use the tape to sticky it back so it doesn't get in our way. Underneath, you'll see the DMD arrow up, which is pointing to where the DMD chip is. The two DMD stickered ribbon cables are actually four. There are two more underneath. Use a gentle plastic pry tool to remove the clips and pull them up. You are now looking at the board that holds the DMD chip and the cooler that cools the DMD chip. With this model, there is a really easy way to get to the DMD chip without taking everything out. And the best way to do that is to take out the green motherboard. To do this, there are two screws holding the motherboard down on a vertical L-shaped panel that's in between the red and green motherboard. The first one is on the right-hand side and a standard screwdriver will be able to reach it. Make sure it's magnetic so you don't lose the screw. Pull that out and undo any of the cable ribbons on the side too. The next one is a little bit more difficult to reach. It is under one of the DMD tabs. I used pliers to get a counter leverage to unscrew the screw without having a very long screwdriver. Once you've removed this, each side of the green motherboard has some more ribbon cables to to remove. Again, they're all different sizes, so you won't mess up putting them back in. Once you've done that, you can navigate to the other side, which also has a hidden ribbon cable right at the side. You can then safely remove the entire red and green motherboard with its L-shaped bracket, removing any other cables holding it down. You will find there are some other cables that are a lot bigger. I've left them in because it can just hang off to the side for now. We now have full visibility of the cooler for the DMD chip. There are four spring-loaded screws in each of the sections holding down the cooler plate. Remove it gently and you'll finally have visibility of the DMD chip just in that little square. There are also four more screws that are holding it down. Remove those. Make sure to catch as things fall off. You will now now have access to the DMD motherboard. And as you pull that off, there is a little plastic clip that is a basically a connector between the chips. That is the DMD chip sitting right there. Make sure this process is very quick. You don't want dust getting into here. 
we are doing it at home. Make sure you do it quickly, swap it out, and of course, don't touch any of the center there, and do not touch your DMD chips front area. Always hold it by the side. Put the chip in the same way that the other one came out, and use a plastic pry tool to just give it a little push. A quick suggestion is have the device vertically instead of on the side like I have here, just in case the DMD chip falls out. Coming back to the cooler, make sure to clean it off from any excess heat paste and apply the new paste on top. Make sure to remove both plastic areas. If you don't, the chip will overheat. Now we're gonna start doing everything in reverse. We're gonna put the little plastic tab that holds the pins together straight onto there and onto the four screw heads. While holding it up, make sure to add the holding plate that's gonna squeeze it all in there. Start with each opposite corner to tighten it rather than going on one side to balance the weight across the chip. It's just like putting a CPU into a computer. Tighten it until the spring is fairly tight, but not too tight. Do the same with the cooler. We can now start moving the motherboard back in onto its pins and putting some of these plugs back in and of course, screwing the cables back in. Again, most of these parts will have a corresponding size slot to put in. So there shouldn't really be an issue for you to remember where it's going to go. Now we can put the metal cover back on and screw that down and plug the last ribbon cable, also taping it down. Lastly, we can plug the power back in. Of course, the shroud goes on and there is a little hook for the cables that we can use again put the two screws back on the back shroud and we'll flip it again and put all the back screws in. So now let's turn it on and test it. Plugging it into power, flicking the remote and... With a bit of a spin up that might take a little bit longer than usual, we should get the logo. There we go, high sense and it's ready to go. No more white dots, perfect working projector. Do it right, play the game, win it life, have no shame, there's no time for the pain. The grind, I could change my mind. Friends, thank you very much for watching. I hope this tutorial helped you get more life out of your projector. A couple things to consider. Sometimes a seller might send you a second hand one ripped out of an existing projector. This will mean it won't have as much life. Make sure to get a new one and hopefully from a trusted seller. And if you have any questions, please let me know below. The description will contain the model number, of course, and the model number for this chip. And if you like this video, if it helps you, make sure to smash that like button. If you want to support us, make sure to subscribe. I'll catch you all in another video. Bye.